and welcome to the fourth episode of TechPad. My name is Jackson Stats, and this is my co-host, Blaze Smith. Hello, and today we are going to be talking about AMD technologies with our special guest, Kyle. Hello. Just introduce yourself. Yeah, my name's Kyle Taylor. Uh, I'm a, just a technology enthusiast, love building PCs and working with hardware. Cool. So what are we talking about tonight? So I was quite interested on some new developments with AMD, uh, and they cr invented this, I would say invented, uh, they developed this new technology, or um, I don't know the much history behind it, but uh, it was just something that caught my eye, this uh, V-Cache technology, where they did this really cool thing of, and there should be, uh, we have some different uh, images to bring up, about how just by um, adding more cache, onto their uh, CCX, which in a, in a CPU, a processor in your, uh, any of your technology, any of your uh, laptops and devices, uh, you have things called the cores, of course, and uh, AMD does this chiplet design where they have multiple groups of cores and they call those a CCX. And so each CCX has cache on it, which is like a lot of really fast storage, well, lot relatively, it's only a couple megabytes of really fast storage that the processor then has really easy access to. Um, very helpful when you're doing things like gaming and other workloads where you wanna have really uh, quick turnarounds on different things. So like the cache is like the, the CPU RAM kind of thing, right? Yeah, like, like I would say more like an SSD. Cool, okay. Um, and so by adding more of it, you are able to just have a bigger buffer for things. So as let's say you're playing COD Warzone or something like that, and um, you need, you're getting to this zone that has a really high uh, texture input. The CPU can then take that information, store it really fast, uh, have its access to it, and it has a much bigger buffer before it fills up and has to start throttling or uh, lowering your frame times. Yep. And so then if you get into a much lighter area for processing, the CPU can then start lowering down and processing through that data um, efficiently enough and fast enough that it can drain that uh, storage. So would you say that more cache is proportional to performance? I would or does say, it have like diminishing returns kind of thing? I would say uh, proportional in the fact as like, if you, if you 10 exit, you're gonna get a lot more performance because you can only make, it only needs really so much, but at this point, we're at the point where more is better because it can use more. Yeah. But there's gonna be a point where just having a, a, a barrel of available storage is, not, is gonna be too much and there's no nest. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's like a, a point of diminishing returns. Right, yeah. and, I don't, and we just haven't reached that yet. Yeah. So the coolest thing uh, from, uh, of course, Tech Power Up and all the other tech sites I was yeah. reading through was the fact that they basically, to do this, they um, took their uh, the CCX chip, they basically flipped it over because um, when you make a, a die, uh, it's just laser engraving pretty much on the top, all the transistors yeah. and different things like that. They basically took it, o turn, turn it around, uh, and this one's saying, uh, where was it? Uh, I think it was like 98 per 95 percent of the silicon is not even used because it's you just don't need to make it that thin or yeah. else it's hard to work with. But they take it, they take the the die, flip it over, and then they just shave down different sections of it until it's pretty much just barely touching the t where the top was. Yeah, and then they just add more cache onto it. They just inscribe a new like cache system in that chip and it pretty much just on top of the actual cores. Mm -hmm. And they effectively triple the cache on the chip. So uh, with their, usually per CCX, it's, um, and a CCX is up to eight cores. So with, the, with AMD's uh, largest chip, uh, for uh, nor with their Ryzen line being at 16 cores, that has uh, 72 megabytes of cache. Uh, wait, no, 74, sorry, uh, from the 30, no, 64 megs. Why was I saying AMD slides? I'll have to look that up. Um, so if they have uh, 32 megabytes of cache 
per CCX. Um, by adding this to add an extra 64 megabytes up to 96 megabytes of cache That's per CCX. It's a big bump. So at their new, uh, if they uh, if they do continue with the same naming scheme and they go to like the 6000 series for their new stuff, then they'll be at the 16 core, will jump up to 192 megabytes of cache. And uh, that's... Um, that's, a, that's a substantial amount. Uh -huh. And it's at... Uh, CPU cache. Two terabytes per second. That's how fast the cache is. And that's incredible. And here I can actually look up some slides of the... Uh, of the... Uh, let's see. The 50X. So just so, so the viewer knows, can, is this already out? I mean, is this technology uh, already being implemented? Or it is, is it for being, future... It's being implemented as in... Oh, well, there's no, of course, there's no confirmation on anything. Yeah, until, these are all just until like leaks, like, right? I mean, right. Until there's, well, AMD did have a a slide presentation, like a yeah. presentation in an investors meeting, talking about the new technologies to, of course, get money because they're yep. a company. It's, it's an investor meeting. Yeah. yeah, it's an investor meeting. They want to show, hey, that we're working on stuff. But this is definitely going to be in uh, either their 6000 series with their new sockets and everything like that. Or uh, they might do something where they did last time with the Matisse architecture, where in a 3000 series, they released the XT chips, um, where those were just tuned differently, but they might release a 5000 series XT uh, variant where it's uh, it has this um, technology implemented, which would be substantially faster because um, from their numbers, they were looking anywhere from 4% increased frames in League of Legends, which makes sense because League of Legends is already it's so easy to run. You can really, it's really hard to boost it even more because yeah. you're in the, you're getting into the four hundreds of frames per second in these titles uh, versus some other games that were running like uh, twenty five percent faster, uh, but just by this increased CPU cache. So it varies differently per game, but that's jumps you would see, like generationally, uh, in the past from Intel and of and AMD in general of the around twenty percent increased performance. Uh, just by this new uh, processing, just like by this new increased cache yeah. type, which is pretty incredible that they didn't change anything with the architecture. Um, they didn't node shrink at all to five nanometers, where they're on seven now. Uh, they just added this new uh, thing that they uh, created, and yeah. it's incredible. Um, cache. Uh, so with this, where does it like put them in comparison to other uh, companies like Intel? Well, Intel right now is, um, they're really fighting it out. It's, they're, with the 11th gen, they're really close, uh, almost to margin of error. It's mostly game dependent because some games are optimized for AMD and the Vulkan API, and then some are optimized for DirectX 11 and 12, which Intel has a stronger field in. And so you really have to look online and uh, it's really a game by game basis on who wins. Um, AMD definitely has more cores in the space, uh, so they've got their 16 core at the 5950X, where Intel really uh, uh, tops out at eight cores on their 11900K. But it's still a very fast gaming processor because Intel still has the lead, even though they've still be on, they've been on the 14 nanometer plus 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 process. You keep adding pluses onto the back, ages, right? <laughs> uh, now. But uh, it was actually pretty incredible when they announced 11th gen because after that they announced that 12th generation Alder Lake is actually going to be released at the end of the year towards Christmas which is quite incredible that they're kind of double generationing here this year so I feel like anybody that's going to buy 11th gen is going to kind of just be out of their money because just for nine months later you're going to get a whole new motherboard there it's going to have DDR5 uh, there's rumors of PCIe 5.0 being on it, which is weird. Um, but DDR5 is the biggest thing there. Um, and then their new processors in 12th gen. And uh, there are actually a lot of rumors going around that uh, 12th gen with uh, their new, with Intel finally getting to 10 nanometers on their um, new Superfin design is going to be incredible. Because they're also implementing this thing called Big Dot Little Design, where they have really uh, power, um, but powerful cores. Um, they only have a couple of the, they have um, mostly those, and then they have a couple power efficient cores. 
And that's very similar to what's happening in the mobile space for the past uh, long time. Because quite, quite similar to Apple's M1 chip, really. Right, I mean, as well, we have a, a bank of dedicated high performance cores. And then for like your web browsing, watching YouTube and Netflix, you have the, the super low power draw cores, right? Right, the power efficient cores. Uh, and Apple does that, Qualcomm does that for any yeah, Android the cell phone. phone. Yeah, the yeah. Um, you'll have your cores that can boost higher um, for, yeah, for booting up applications, opening things, and then you can uh, direct them down to the background task, uh, to the yeah. uh, smaller cores for background tasks. Yeah. So, I mean, going back just a second to the, the new cache architecture, um, right. would, you know, because AMD manufactures server chips, their Epic lineup. Right. Do you think they'll integrate this cache, you know, better in better architecture into, would it be of use to have a server oh, definitely. that could have more cache? Yeah, servers uh, with their high processing of things, they're always shuffling through data. Yeah. The huge thing in the server market is just these new fast SSDs, they're going straight there first to, to have those really high uh, just transfers of getting data just in and out everywhere. And yeah. so having more cache, being able to have a, a bigger, basically queue for the data to get through. And also this new this uh, new cache technology is even faster than uh, the old L3 um, the, on the reusing. And so that will increase uh, the use there as well, I'm pretty sure. So uh, we, we just talked about the Apple M1. How would you say, if you know, I mean, it might be a little bit out of your range of knowledge how would this compare to the apple m1 the is, M1, is this is this like supposed to compete or is it kind of a different product i guess is uh, really the question <laughs> i don't know specific on that the m1 no, that's my, I mean, um, yeah i can speculate saying that though the m1 is kind of in a league of its own because it's it's kind of hard to compare as well because uh amd chips are x86 yeah they're different, while, arch they're different. Uh, they're different yeah. architectures uh Apple has amazing power efficiency. Uh, this one go with that, but again, this is really for gaming in those high intensive workloads that would need the cache like this. Yeah. Where with uh, just rendering applications, uh, that's more that's much more just raw CPU power yeah. than needing cache because uh, and also if this technology is not out yet, then most programmers just don't take advantage of it. Yeah. You'd have to program it to take advantage of more CPU cache. Yep, and honestly, I just don't know that much about Apple uh, Silicon. Uh, I just haven't researched that much about yeah, that's, that's fine. Things. I just wondered if, if you had a had a thought on that. So. And I, oh, yeah, I found the thing uh, while I was getting confused. So uh, it has uh, so the 5950X has uh, 64 megabytes of L3 cache. Yeah, but combine that with the eight megabytes of L2 cache is where I was getting that 72 number, which is what was advertised on the slides there, I remember seeing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I forgot about L2. Um, so yeah, and so it was just incredible to, to hear about that. They, they, that I, for, I forgot there's so much silicon there on the uh, CCX because it, sh it is just laser engraving yeah. uh, for, creating, for creating the chips. And uh, of course, there's different processes than that in chemicals and things, but it's, oh, it's it's extremely thin comparatively to the actual the thickness of the wafer. Yep. And uh, the fact that they just decided to hey, we're just gonna flip it over, shave it down, and shove some more cash on there, and yep. it just kind of worked. And then I mean, it was it's, like, hey, so awesome. it's better space efficiency, really. Is oh yeah. Doing. Instead, because normally they increase in the x direction. Yeah. And uh, just make it a larger chip. And if you make it a larger chip, then you have to make it a larger uh, PCB, larger yeah. sockets, uh, which um, you can only get so large because motherboards are standard sizes and yeah. you need to have room for everything else. And then that comes into the ITX space of every square millimeter is precious to shoving another component on there. Yeah. And uh, so you want to make things as tight as you can. And then at that point, you would have to get into other technologies and things that you're missing out on. Uh, based um, having a smaller I/O die, which means you couldn't do better, uh, faster PCIe lanes, and then uh, also just maybe not having enough space for cores. Yeah. But uh, by by going in the Z direction, uh, they can 
this might just also get in the engineer's head of this is actually a way we can do things uh, to maybe uh, make the IH IHS smaller yeah. and have better uh, yeah, definitely. thermal tr transfer uh, to make their chips cooler. Um, there's also, I remember, some talk of like uh, people designing um, water cooling inside the chip. Like, uh, yes, I, I remember, I remember Lion, like Lion's that. Tech Tips did a video on that where they just yeah. popped the IHS off and water then had, had, had the, had the water cooler, uh, like just put thermal paste all over the die itself and it smacked a. No, I'm like not in a laptop. About that. I'm talking about like mini, like oh, channels like, on the on the actual die. So like that water, pushing that water through, through the die, that might be cool in a gaming laptop. Like microscop yeah, it was like microscopic, like uh, kind of how they do it in um, not well, not exactly how they do it in, uh, but like more convection based instead of yeah. pump based, where they have like in um, I'm trying to think of them the name uh, like heat pipes. Yeah, uh, that's convection based. Uh, where and in, in uh, the internal structure of wicking the water away yeah. as it gets hot, that way there's no moving parts. It just does it on its own, uh, based on just thermodynamics, yeah. and everything just and so it would be able to do something like that as well, which would be, it, it showed amazing results. But again, all lab testing, nothing proving that yeah. it can be done so full scale because that's that'd be so precise. That might be a, I can see. Like if you're making if Dell or Alienware, Dalienware or phones, yeah, or phones, just integrating this, I mean, because you can, that effectively means you can shrink the, the, the pipe, right? I mean, this it just takes up less room, which is at a premium in the in smaller devices. So I, it's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. It was so incredible, and then also that kind of reminds me with uh, mobile and Qualcomm. Uh, isn't NVIDIA, like, getting buddy-buddy with Qualcomm uh, for putting, like, AI and things into it? And since they're, Qualcomm already does ARM. That sounds familiar. AMD is getting buddy-buddy with Samsung, yeah. which I am in full support of because <laughs> I, lo I yeah. love both those companies. But, of course, whatever is faster, that's what you get. Yeah. Well, more cost, of, faster and cost-effective. Value. Right. Yeah. I, I was actually talking to this one guy uh, who wanted to build a game PC with him, and I was like, you want to get this processor from like Micro Center? They're having an amazing deal on it. Yeah. And then he was like, no, I want AMD. And I'm like, but this one's cheaper and the same speed. And he's like, nope, AMD. And I'm like, there's nothing, there's okay, no shame in no going shame. Intel. Yeah. I'm you like, know? He, would, I mean, yeah he, he was just like, oh, my friends hate AM, hate Intel or something like that. And no, I'm like, yeah, fanboyism I mean, kind of kills the consumer market. Like, like for me, things. fanboy, I used to be a huge anti Apple, like a, you know, <laughs> Samsung and Windows fanboy. Oh, yeah, I got the S9. Got the S10. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, S9. Oh, yeah. And, but it was mainly because Apple just didn't make anything good. Yeah. Like, just, at the time. They're using in, they're using Intel chips yeah. that were just, I think it was more Intel's fault than Apple's fault because they were innovating with uh, making Bionics chips for their, uh, phones and stuff, yeah, but at, but it, for their computers. For computers I mean, yeah. Intel wasn't like giving them the results they wanted because power efficiency. That is true, but I mean, Apple 14. had a fair bit to play in it being a bad laptop as well. You know, like the butterfly keyboard. Oh yeah, where you yeah. just the keyboard would just stop working yeah. after a couple of months, and you know that sort of thing. So I, I'm familiar. I'm familiar. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I do have a Mac now because they fixed all the major complaints I had with it. There's still a couple like. USB C only. Oh, yeah, that yeah. just kind of to buy the docks, kinda, buy the dongles. And oh yeah, like, like I have a whole bag of just, just dongles. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, back to Alder Lake for a minute. Um, so there was a rumor, uh, there was a leak on Twitter by uh, by uh, by one of the uh, uh, leakers, Raichu, and uh, he was quoted saying, uh, <laughs> "The new uh, the twelve nine hundred KS uh, engineering sample." Uh, non overclocked on water, so probably talking, we're talking like probably a 360 millimeter rad or something. Uh, Cinebench R20 standard stuff. I think Cinebench is Cinebench R20. I think that's Intel favored though. Like I've seen a lot, I've, I've seen like swinging results between R22 and I think R24 is the newest one, right? I think so. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah so I don't know why they're using R20 because that seems quite old compared to what we have yeah. now and i think i remember r20 having some something like favoring intel like just being like more intel optimized just, kind of thing yeah optimized for it 
Um, so this might they might need, of course, independent reviews. You yeah. always, you never trust one go around. Um, but twenty eight percent faster in multi threading than the uh, the fifty nine fifty X, and I forget it's supposed to be like a ten core, I guess. Yeah. Like I think it was like um, eight big core. I think wait no six big. I don't know. Uh, the big dot little design is confu- is going to confuse everyone. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. I like, I don't know why this hasn't been integrated sooner, honestly. Well, I mean, it's, it's been it's in the phone market, yeah, right? Yeah, the phone market. But, but it's in the PC. I mean, I guess. I, I guess the laptop, it's a great idea. Yeah. But again. Well, a desktop, you don't really need it, you know? Right. Well, the thing I'm thinking for desktop is why they're going this way. Is that way they can just shove juice through the big course yeah. and keep that TDP at the same level. So they have the more power efficient ones that just kind of do a standby and they can just get those really fast single core, Yeah, uh, which is actually here. Um, let me see. Uh, I mean, it might be good for streaming, you uh, know? Yeah. Does, like, like I mean, does, tasks. does the, um, 16, does gaming 16. really, from my experience, I don't think gaming always needs a ton of, like most games are optimized for two or four cores, right? I think four cores is the huh. what most games are optimized for. But I don't know. It doesn't for me. Like it never uses a hundred percent of the CPU. So they of that are specific going, core. I mean, yeah, if, if you have an older system, yeah. it probably would. But for me, I have a Ryzen twenty six hundred. So I, I would assume that you could put one of these big little big dot little chips, whatever the name is. <laughs> I forgot. Brain fart. Ultra um, Lake. Yeah, twelfth gen. You could have the gaming on the more power efficient cores, and then have the heavy duty encoding on the. But the encoding is usually efficient. handled by the iGPU. Like these have hardware encoding. That is true. Or the, or just the dedicated GPU. It is true, but if you wanted your GPU to do the focus more on gaming, well, I guess Nvidia. Yeah, has, but Nvidia has like a has great the, encoder. The, yeah, a hardware. Oh yeah, here it is. It's supposed to be a sixteen core, uh, the twelve nine hundred K. Um, with the first one to two cores out of the eight. So there's eight big, eight little, um, with the first one to two being able to do like the 2.3 gigahertz, yep. which again, I'm surprised that by going to 10 nanometers, they're still keeping above five gigahertz. Like they've been working on this for a while. They're just actually now able to make it. Yeah. So they've been, they've been refining this I mean, architecture for a while. Well, as you get smaller, can't you more easily increase in speed? Well, that's the thing. There's usually like this thing called a TikTok. Yeah. Um, architecture where you go, you trade a smaller node for a decreased clock speed and you have to kind of, and then you kind of have to mess with it a little bit to get the clock speeds yeah. back up. Or actually no, TikTok's more IPC and then clock speed. Yep. You ticking that. But usually when you go to a smaller node, you have, um, you have to decrease clock speed and then work with it and tune it a little bit yep. over time. But they've been working on this for years. So that's just been delay, delay. So they're still above. So 5.3 gigahertz for the first one to two cores. And the rest of the eight are supposed to be at five gigahertz. And then you can tell, yeah, they're just pumping electricity. Oh my gosh. Um, and then this, the last, um, the, the, the next group of one to four are going to be like 3.9 gigahertz. And then the rest of them are going to be like 3.7 yeah. at the minimum. Um, 30 megabytes. Which isn't L3 slow. Cache. And it's not it's slow, not but slow. still. It's, I mean, it's not. As that's much different than 5 gigahertz. Yeah. And I honestly, it just sounds like, it sounds a little bit like just rebranding what they already do. Because yeah. Intel, like, There's it's the whole up to. Like, the, every, the not every core gets the 5.3 gigahertz on yeah. the um, 10900K or something like KS or something it's like that. It's only the very, it's only the ones that can. Like, they, like not, o- not every, like, processor does that but i guess if they can reduce if they can like hardware lock some of the other ones they could just they have a lot more electricity because this thing's i don't know what uh pl1 and pl2 means but pl one saying 125 watts and then 228 watts so i don't know what that specifically means but i i, I could understand 125 I, I just think that maybe like dual i, I don't know a lot of like, watts. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna say 125 <laughs> watts uh, yeah. watt TDP. That's definitely um, a desktop grade chip, right there. And then there. you got the yeah. the i7 uh, looking at as a 12 core, and then you got the i5 as a 
10 core, yeah. I guess, um, which again, so a six core. And then there's like some things like where the, uh, there's gonna be hyper threading on the big cores. Mm -hmm. So the, the thread count's gonna be whack. Um, where I think it's, it's gonna be called, yeah, it's gonna be called like a six core, but it's, and so it's got six big, four little, and then, um, those six are gonna be hyper threaded. So it's gonna be like 18 threads yeah. on the i5, but you're gonna have to lose power efficiency. Cause people are saying that like, um, each little core is like a quarter of a real core, I guess. Yeah. In IPC. Cause they're so they're made to be power efficient, not IPC, even if the clock speeds high. So again, this yeah. is, it's, it's really hard to talk about things when it's all rumors. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. and well, we're running out of time. Stuff. So any last, um, any last questions, thoughts, uh, concerns? Well, with this performance boost, pretty big, uh, what do you think the, if the rumors are true, uh, what do you think the price would be? Or like, oh, uh, it's, it's like, would they really put the price really high up? Just I the think LPs? they'd just be, they would probably just be on par with what AMD's price prices are now. AMD. So they're just gonna they're just gonna swap in and out. Right? I, I, mean, I right. think so. Um, if I think that's better, but they might do a think. surcharge of like fifty bucks extra. But AMD already did that, and that's gonna make people mad because AMD bumps like an extra hundred bucks on some processors, an extra fifty bucks on some other processors uh, with this new five thousand series because because yeah. they could. Yeah. Like that's it's greed. That's the reason. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can just go on Amazon, and it's. Uh, like a hundred dollars more for the uh, for the eight core. Yeah, uh, and it's um you can you could say that oh the fifty nine fifty X, sorry uh, the fifty six hundred X is only fifty dollars more than uh, last generation of the yeah. thirty six hundred X which was two fifty, but you really can't say that it's actually a hundred dollars more because there is no fifty six hundred non X. No, yeah. and so you can't that is this you have to pay three hundred dollars for a six core nowadays. Or with last generation, you could pay two hundred dollars. So it's actually a hundred dollars more expensive yeah. if you look at that, because you can compare that all you want. But if you want to buy a six core new, you are paying a hundred dollars more. Yeah. And then cool. one one last thing of single threaded performance of those big cores, uh, the fifty nine fifty X is single core at uh, six hundred fifty on Cinebench, and then uh, the new twelve nine hundred K is eight hundred and ten. Which, if that's if that's true, that makes it the fastest CPU in the world. Yeah. For single threaded, that's like those are record breaking numbers. Yeah. And imagine if you could if you could uh, ni liquid nitrogen cool that thing. Oh yeah. You could maybe boost even more. But. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time. So I'd like to thank you for watching this fourth episode of TechPad. I'd like to thank Kyle here for coming in to LPM to record this and be our special guest. Thanks for having me. Yep. And I hope you learned a little bit from TechPad, and I hope to see you next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Thanks for watching.